Friends, thank you for joining us on Food for Thought. My name is Sunil Chandy. I'm Father Chandy from Christ Episcopal Church, and this is a program coming out of Christ Episcopal Church. And we thank you for being part of us and uh, connecting to us through uh, this programming. And so uh, if you are with us today, tell us. This is a live show. We have a, a wonderful guest who will, uh, I think will be a real fun, to, a fun person to talk to, especially as we talk about transformations, uh, many different ways in which uh, the transformations come, come to us. And so um, uh, our guest is going to give us some wisdom, I think. And, uh, and, and if you are with us again, please let us know. Uh, let us know if this is live program. So if you are watching at the 12 o'clock hour from 12 to 1230 about, uh, we will, uh, I, it would be in, in really wonderful to hear what your comments are and anything that will help us to continue to improve and also uh, to help with the intent of, of this whole programming, which is really to help us connect with one another, especially through as we face the various challenges of our lives. Uh, the challenge that it's initiated all of this was uh, the challenge of the COVID virus about two years ago. And so we've been doing this ever since. And uh, and I've been noticing a great connection that we've been making to people all over uh, the world and especially in our community. And so um, this has uh, been really wonderful for the church here at Christ Church and, of course, uh, with all of our friends all over uh, the globe. So um, at the very beginning of our program, I, uh, we always talk a little bit about, uh, you know, some wisdom, uh, wisdom. And, and this wisdom uh, actually is uh, coming from this, this last Sunday, this last week was very, very important for us because, uh, you know, we're in the season of Lent and we have been going through this, uh, this experience of, uh, of having different speakers come and talk to us about how to navigate through Lent and uh, navigate through the wilderness of life, especially in in Lent in the Christian church. It's there's a there's the wonderful metaphor of the the wilderness that's here and and so um, you know the children of Israel moving from the from their oppression in Egypt and moving into freedom and they they travel through the wilderness of the desert. Uh, and until finally they get into the promised land. And there's Jesus who travels from um, from northern Israel down to Jerusalem, and and he's always on a journey. And and in the journey, there's always this there's there are these these uh, conversations about the wilderness, and especially at the beginning of his his ministry, he was he was tempted in the wilderness by uh, the devil, and how the Christians. Uh, deal with the challenges and the temptations in the wilderness is something that we we talk about in this season of Lent. And of course, there is this other story that's embedded with the other two larger stories. It's the story of Israel's exile. Exile. Uh, this is after um, King David and and his and all of the monarchs of the, uh, of uh, of Israel. Uh, Israel is taken over by Babylon, and there and they are. Uh, they're exiled in Babylon, and they're in this wilderness experience. And even this wilderness experience is 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 present for them as they they're in a town, a city state, you know. And how they manage, and how do they uh, uh, manage the challenge and hold on to their faith, and and how their faith deepens through the experience of the wilderness. So the wilderness is very. Uh, important in this this concept of Lent. And so we've had uh, some speakers who who've come and talked to us from the various traditions of faith uh, to talk about how those traditions of faith manage the wilderness. And one one of the speakers was uh, that really struck me and all of them were wonderful for me. But uh, uh, this last one, uh, Ye Yezekiel Landau spoke to us a little bit about the Jewish perspective of, of traveling through the wilderness and and uh, and to learn how to trust in God. So the other day, I, I the day after that uh, that presentation, I had a time to to uh, to have breakfast with Yes We we were engaged in prayer, and uh, you know he prayed over the at the uh, the meal, and it was a beautiful prayer. He said it in Hebrew. It was just eloquent, and uh, and then he said. You know, every moment, which was really pretty significant because we 
we spoke about it for a while. Every moment is pregnant with the possibility of God. You know, God is the creator of all, the source of all the blessings. And because every moment is, is a potential messianic moment. It's a, it's a moment in which God can transform and can help us uh, transform that experience in us so that it could transform in us, a, 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 a transform us to be, to acknowledge the, 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 the possibility of the kingdom of God being a reality in our hearts all the time. And so, um, so we were talking about prayer and we were talking about, about uh, the blessings. And then he said, you know, Sunil, there's even a bathroom blessing that uh, we, uh, we people of uh, Judaism uh, engage in some time. And I said, a bathroom blessing? What? A bathroom blessing? And he goes, yeah, it's, it, you know, we, we say this prayer after after we after our experience in the bathroom he says you know and I, and then he said it to me and and he prayed it uh, it was so eloquent it was beautiful it sounded so holy and then he and he translated it in the english and that also was beautiful beautiful words and i i think i'd like to share this with you he said you know we, we were bowed down in prayer he say blessed are you god our God, sovereign of the universe who formed humans with wisdom and created within them many openings and many hollows. It is obvious in the presence of a glorious throne that if one of them were ruptured or if one of them were blocked, it would be impossible to exist and to stand in your presence. Blessed are you, God, who heals all flesh and performs wonders. I, I love that prayer. I mean, I, I you know, it's so earthy too. I mean, I'm... <laughs> You know, uh, he, he you created many openings and hollows, right? You know, basically, Yezekiel, when I was saying, you know, we tend to think that the miraculous happens when there's a problem. And, and then we pray that the problem or the challenge will go away or we're made, we're able to come through it. And, and then we say, then we acknowledge God's presence. Say, oh, God did it for us. We prayed, and 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 the and and the person is healed, and uh, or the challenge is gone, or something happens, and we say we attribute it to God. What this prayer acknowledges is the uh, not the opposite, but just that if in life, life in itself is a miracle, and 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 the plumbing we have, you know, the the fact that it works well is a miracle. I mean, it is a complex system that we have in our body and 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 God created it and so when so this acknowledges this prayer acknowledges and, and I love this prayer and I love every prayer that acknowledges that every moment is a miracle and pregnant with God and and then further if we pray in this manner if we say that every moment is a miracle then we deepen our faith. We see the miracles happening in our life. And then when those challenging times do happen, we rely and have faith in a God that we know is a God of miracles. I, it's just a beautiful perspective. And especially as we come out of the pandemic, you know, we acknowledge that it it is a it was a hard time. It is a hard time. It's still a hard time for many people. Yet we've come out of it, and there were miracles in between, and connections that were made, and and we thank God for it. We thank God because we wouldn't have made it through to this side to to where we are right now if it wasn't for our dependence on this God who is a create, creates this wonderful universe. Well, today uh, we have a wonderful guest. He is, uh, uh, he, his wife has been on our uh, program before. Uh, Gina Loken was, uh, was, this, was a, uh, a planner and, or as a coach, an executive coach. And she, she, she was so engaging with us. And, and so um, we, uh, you know, we, we I said hello, I, you know, to her her husband, 
uh, Eric. And Eric uh, has this wonderful story. And he is, uh, and I said, you know, we've got to have him on the show. Eric Loken uh, is, uh, is the husband of Gina Loken. Uh, but Eric is a Christ follower and he's the owner of Narrow Road Van Conversions. And so he's got a lot to say about transformations. And so I've been wanting to speak to him. Hey, Eric, how are you? Hi, great to be here. Good. Thank you so much for being with us. And thank you. Yeah. You have a lovely wife, a beautiful wife, and you're a handsome young young man. And, and you make a beautiful couple. <laughs> well, I'm definitely blessed. It, uh, she's she's amazing. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I, I love I love the name of your your uh, company. Uh, so uh, one, owner of uh, Narrow Road Van Conversions. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, when uh, I formed the company, I wanted to glorify God uh, was kind of the first and the foremost thing that I wanted to do. And I just thought that it was a, a great dual uh, use uh, of the narrow road. So what I do is I create um, travel spaces that are comfortable, innovative and inspiring. So we take work vans and we turn them into RVs. So it's kind of like the normal van, that, uh, cargo van that you would see a plumber or electrician driving. Um, they're tall enough you can stand up in them. And we're basically putting a lot of stuff in that small little area and just maximizing the space. So hot and cold water, electricity, basically everything that you'd expect. And what we do that's different than RVs is uh, RVs are kind of meant to be plugged in. We're meant to be off grid and out and exploring. So that's where the narrow road kind of came from is, uh, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to put on my website was uh, why does the road to the RV park? Um, and then I wanted to show this little video of like all these RVs packed in like sardines, you know, cr uh, crunched in there. And then narrow is the road to, you know, to freedom and exploration of, uh, uh, and, you know, and then a video of a van going down a dirt road and then pulling in and parking by itself next to the stream and just being in nature. Um, I, I ran that idea past my small group and and I decided not to do it. <laughs> Why not? I, I, I felt like it might be a little just using scripture in a different way than other than what it's meant. I just haven't gotten the OK from my mini. Uh, um well, I'd love to hear your, your opinion on it. I kind of liked it, but I, I just would hate to be blasphemous in any way. And if there's a chance of that, I just don't well, want to do it. You know, I think, I think what you do is uh, you, you, you make, sh you make sure that the tensions are, 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 are managed in your, in your mind. You know, you want to be faithful to the scripture, but you also want, you also, it's a, it's a beautiful image. Jesus gave us this image of, uh, of the narrow road, you know, the, you know, the idea that, that uh you know that uh you know that everyone it's almost as if everyone wants to follow one particular pathway but the pathway to follow christ is very sometimes very very uh, uh you know lonely it's also uh it's a dangerous pathway in some way because it, it's it it takes a lot of risk you know a risk to be uh the person who follows christ you know and and even in Lent, in this in this season for us Christians here, uh, you know, in, in the Episcopal Church and all over the world, right, in, in many different denominations, where we understand that you know, following Christ is not always an easy thing to do. You you have to you 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 think differently. You have to almost think counterculturally. So, you know, I I don't mind. I don't. I actually think you should play with that and you should, yeah. you should think about it because I think at the end of the day, it's, it's also your testimony of faith, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm trying to uh, find more ways to integrate my faith into my work. Um, yeah. And then that's one of those balances that I, that you, you strive for. Um, and it's, it's just, it's one of those things. Yeah. You work at. Yeah. Um, so the narrow road, that's, that's was kind of the play I had in my mind when this, uh, when I formed this company and we do these, these vans and they're meant to be out there on their own. So, uh, speaking of transformation, you know, we transform this empty van into something that can be out on its own. 
And then in my life, you know, I've experienced transformation. Uh, you're talking about Lent and uh, 40 days in the wilderness or 40 years in the wilderness. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I can really, really uh, um, relate to that, to that story. Um, I feel like I've spent 40 years in the wilderness. Um, so I'm, I'm 49 years old. I'll be 50 shortly <laughs> in the next month or so. But I do feel like um, when I was 40, that's when I really made a, 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 I had some big life changes in my life. And I really made the turn to uh, following Christ. And, um, you know, what a wonderful um, journey uh, it's been in the last 10 years um, of redemption and, uh, and faithfulness of God and patience and, uh, you know, him waiting for me for 40 years. And uh, thank goodness not, you know, judging me on year 38 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and being patient for me because I'm glad he waited for me. You know what? I, I, I love this idea about transformation. And I mean, this is this is this is also the Easter story. It's also the story of the Bible, right? It's the story. So that's what I love watching. You know, it's interesting. I have a, a little pet peeve. I love the YouTube YouTube sometimes, and I watch these these uh, these little these videos of of van conversions, of of RV conversions. I see like house conversions. I love that. I think I think America is captivated, and not only America but the globe. I mean, I almost also love these little clips of of uh, of, of people in. In different parts of the world and uh, and they've got a stick or something or they got a, sh a shovel and then all of a sudden they've created this like palace out in the desert or something right yeah i think we're we love transformations right yeah we love the idea of of taking something that almost seems broken and then reviving it and and here's the here's the wonderful, interesting part that I think is so theologically wonderful. It's not like you're 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 buying something new. It's not like you're throwing away something, but actually you're taking that thing and saying, "Look, you are this," and and we could and God uses it, and and every part of you is beloved, and every part of you can be used in, in, to in a way that makes life vibrant and hopeful and joyful. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you don't, you don't get a, so even with your van conversions, you don't take the van away and you say, okay, you know, we could replace this totally. You know, you take the bare bones and say, this is viable. Let's just transform it. Let's make it something, even, you know, something else so that it could, it could offer a different way of life. Mm, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I, I love it. And and YouTube is uh, exactly what my audience kind of came from. And that's where I get all of my customers is that's how I started. I built the first one. Um, I did a, a walkthrough on it and put it on YouTube. And and that's how it all began. And that's kind of what I do with each van that I do now. I, I put them on YouTube. So can we put uh, can we see some pictures? Let's sure. see some pictures. I love to see some pictures. Ben, can you get them to uh, get the pictures up? Yeah, if you go to narrowroadvanconversions.com, I do have it up on my screen also. Um, ben, are you there? Is, ben is like like the voice of God to come in. <laughs> yeah, and if he clicks on conversions and then say Ram Pro Master. There it is. There it is. Yeah. All right. Yep, and then just pan down a little bit. There's my wife and I, and that's the YouTube that uh, the first one that I made. Oh wow! Which ironically, um, I just bought that back, so I, that's a good story in itself. Oh my god! Look at that! Look yeah. at that! Yeah. I was I you know every time I look at this and I and I say I tell my wife you know we've got to do something like this right, but then she goes you're you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know. How it, it's a great thing for pre, for people who um, want to be out there, but you know, don't want to rough it. You yeah. kind of have everything. You have everything that you need in there. Oh, that's your baby too. Oh my God, you have yeah. a baby. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> and and so, do you have solar power on the top? 
Yes, yes. Yep, so everything is on board. Uh, it has a lot of batteries on board that hold all the power. Okay. So you can charge those batteries with the solar panel. Um, the alternator, the van can charge the batteries, or you can plug it in if you need to. Okay. Lots, yeah, it, it, it basically you have everything you'd need. It's kind of like tiny homes, but mobile. Yes. I know what I was, I, I even like tiny homes now. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, and so how many people can fit in, you think? I usually, I like to say it's a two person thing. It's and most of my customers are um, people who um, haven't had children yet or empty nesters. Um, and what's really great about the empty nester is, uh, you know, a husband and wife could travel in that. And a lot of people, their, their kids live all over the globe or all over the country now. And they can yeah. go and visit and you park in their driveway. And it's not like when you visit somebody, it's not like you have to go in, they have to make you dinner, they have to uh, put you in a bedroom, they have to, you know, you really, you can visit, and then you can retire back to your own area in your van in their driveway. Yeah. And you're really not imposing. Imposing on, on, their, uh, on them. Disrupting their life. Yeah. yeah. And that goes for friends, you know, that you have across the country too. And, and that's what kind of my wife's and my dream are is to, is to do this, um, is to go travel. And this is kind of the one of the steps in our process here. Wow, love this. And then, uh, and so this is, but it looks so spacious though. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, yeah. It's like, and it's just a, a car cargo van. Right, yeah, and, and you know, that was one of the big developments in cargo vans is making the high tops that you can stand up. You know, that's what, what uh, the, the big difference between the 1970s van, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that that, you know, the joke is living in a van down by the river. Right. And you, you think of people who, uh, you know, uh, don't have a lot of stuff living in a van. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when you get inside these and you can stand up, I mean, boy, that's really. Yeah, that was really the freedom part. And then just getting everything right sized for two people. And we just we have so much stuff in America and we really do become slaves to our own. Uh, things that we have, um, yeah. you know, and getting out there on the road with whatever you fit in that van. It's just my wife and I find that, but well, we have more than enough in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that. I love that idea. And, and so like, uh, so let me ask you, how much does a conversion cost? Something like that. Yeah. And, you know, on one end of the spectrum, uh, you see a lot of kids doing this, uh, you know, apartments are expensive right now. And there's a lot of uh, younger kids who do these on their own. So the one end of the spectrum would be go to Ikea, you buy a futon and you ratchet strap it to the wall of the van. And there you go. <laughs> so there's one end of the spectrum. I would say we are on the very far other end of the spectrum. Um, the people I have working for me are high end cabinet makers. Um, so it's our market is to be less like an RV, which is kind of plasticky and thin and cheap. Um, and this is more like a high-end kitchen that you're in. Yeah. Um, so on our end of the spectrum, it's about $70,000 $70, for the, the work to be done. So that's without the van. So Without, and, without the van. You're right. Customers typically will buy their van, and then they bring it to me, and then I, I upfit it. How long does it take to, uh, to upfit something? Yeah, it takes about three months. Three and, months. Uh, yeah, the, the, the model I've incorporated was – uh, kind of the opposite of the assembly line. Um, and I've also heard this is how people, how, how Ferrari makes cars. They have one craftsman who makes the vehicle and that's what I have. So my customer meets that craftsman and he owns his project from start to finish. And he, he does everything in there with the exception of the electrical. I do have an electrician who does my electrical work. Um, so yeah, it's about three months is what I like to say. Total, it's about 700 hours man hours that go into it. So when people wow. think that they're, Hey, I'm kind of handy. I can do this. I said, just, just put 700 hours in, in, in there and figure out when you're going to finish your van. If you want to do it yourself. Yeah. I if know you have time. Good. If you have well, time, yeah. 700 hours is like almost seven months, you know, it's all like seven, eight, nine months real. Of, yeah. of, you know, I mean, if you think a thousand hours is a, it's a part-time job, a part-time job, a thousand hours, uh, you know, 52 weeks, that's about a year. 
you know? Yeah. So, but it's, that's, that's amazing. So, so go ahead. No, that's okay. It'd be about 20 or about 17 or 18, four, uh, 40 hours. Wow. 17 weeks. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got to be able to, to know what you're doing. I mean, if you yeah. don't know what you're doing. Well, the learning curve is huge. And especially with what you put in them, what works in them. So what I really found is that RV um, things don't work well in these vans. So what I've gone to is I, I use more yacht parts because yachts are meant to be out and on their own on the ocean and self-sufficient. So I actually use more yacht parts than I do RV parts when I build these. Wow. So it, wow. it's a big learning curve with finding the um, the uh, the things that go in it. So like I, I love, you know, I even see like, school buses being transformed and, and turned and, and, and things like that. And people, and it's interesting, you're right. I mean, this whole idea, of, I, I don't know, is it a, a COVID experience or is it just the, the, the experience that people are just out on the, are, are willing to be out, out and, and uh, they're not tied so much to one place. Yeah. Do you have experience, do you know that uh, experience or? Well, I, I, I feel like this has been gaining popularity before COVID and COVID kind of put it into a whole nother level. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, what's really nice about these vans is they're so easy to drive. Um, and if anybody's ever driven an RV, I mean, boy, that's not, yeah. it's not relaxing. It's not something you'd think of Well, on vacation. I'm going to drive this big, huge thing down the road and you're kind of nervous, even, you know, getting off into streets, you know, on, so that's the other thing about these vans that makes them maneuverable and they're easy to drive. Yeah. Yeah. They're kind of right sized, you know, yeah, is what yeah. they really are. They fit in a regular parking spot so you can park somewhere without like, you know, pulling in and wondering where you're going to park, you know, even. Yeah. So I'd love to see the bedroom part again. Uh, ben, could you pull, pull that bedroom part like the bed? How, how big is it? Like do you put, is it yeah. a queen size bed? It's a queen size width of the bed. And, um, And then uh, it, it we fit in the bed sideways. And on this particular van, each van has its own width. But this particular van has about uh, five foot eleven, about six foot sideways. So I have to trim the mattress down a little bit to fit in there. Yeah, you can see it behind there a little bit, and yes. a little bit closer to the end is uh, where I really I talk a little bit more about the bed. Oh, okay. And then also like the uh, the kitchen is beautiful. I love that kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, so here I'm just talking about some uh, little nooks and crannies that we build into these vans. Um, and there's my wife and, and my son Riker sitting on the bed. The bed can sit hinge up, to so you can sit up in bed and face forward. It, oh. can, hinge, it can hinge up the other way, so you can sit facing backwards if you wanted to look out. You know, at the if you're parked at the ocean or something. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And, and then, everything dual purpose is kind of what I. Yeah. build into these vans yeah there's a lot of thought thought behind all of this and 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 that's beautiful yep how many trips have you guys got to um well we life. get we get to test we get to test these vans out uh and our favorite trip was we had a customer out in seattle who wasn't able to drive it back and we offered to drive it out there for him and we took it down and uh, around the southern part of America, America, you know, I went down to the Grand Canyon and then came up through California all the way up to Seattle. And we learned so much on that trip. Um, I learned a lot with that. So recently I've had the opportunity to buy that first van back, um, which is a blessing to God <laughs> uh, uh, in and of itself. Um, it's, it's so funny uh, if I just diverge for a second there about that story. I worked at a church. I did purchasing for a large church. Yeah. And I worked there for five years. And um, I built that first van on nights and weekends while still working at the church. And it took me six months to build. And I remember going, uh, I get into the church, I, I get to work. And I was always there two hours earlier than everybody because I'd leave a little earlier so I could work on the van at night. And I'd have paint all over my hands and I'd look tired. And they say, boy, how's the van coming? I said, well, it's slow, but I, I boy, I wish it was mine. And I think of how many times my voice echoed, echoed down the hall of that church 
saying, boy, I wish it was mine. Wow. And God gave it back to me. It just was, it's, it really is one of those stories that for me, when, you know, when God works in your life that, you know, I've built 15 of these and this is the first one I've had the opportunity to buy back. And it was the very first one that I, you know, uh, yeah. Wow. Talking oh, about. So beautiful. anyways, yeah. I mean, I think, I think, you know, uh, Eric, I think, uh, you're a special person because you kind of you kind of see God active in your life in such a powerful way. And yeah. again, this whole idea about transformation, I mean, it's probably yeah. very pivotal in your psyche and your, uh, yeah. in your spirit, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I quit that job and I decided to do this full time, I really had not much lined up. I actually had nothing lined up. And uh, <clears throat> my wife was, was very worried about it. And, um, we had prayed about it and we felt we had got a clear answer that the answer was yes. And, and what I told my wife was, I said, you know, how many times um, I've, I've been through a, a fair amount of things, struggles in my life and God's brought me through every one. And when I look back, I can see how he did it. And when I was going through those struggles, I had this image in my mind that I would be um, kind of curled up under a table hiding and, you know, praying, God, please help me, save me, save me. I need to be helped. I need saved. And then, you know, he saves me and I get up and I kind of look and, and every, and he saved me. Right. That's kind of the analogy I have in my head. And I told my wife, I said, on this time, I want to like sit there wide open, eyes open. And I want to watch God, like put everything together in front of me as it happened. I want to see his miracles. You know, if I'm curled up, with my head between my legs, I don't get to see the miracles on how he, how did he pull that up? How did that all work out? I don't know. But if I sit there with eager anticipation and believing, knowing that he's going to pull me through this um, and you watch it happen, it's just what a, what a, what a, just a great blessing to have. So that's what I wanted to do in this challenge of my life um, is, is see him put it together. And I got to see that and witness it. And it was just, it's just wonderful, wonderful testament of him. Working. I love that. It is yeah. a wonderful testament. And, and you know, it's interesting that you, so, so after you left your job, you, you wanted this orientation, this vision, this way of seeing God active yeah. and putting things together, right? Yeah. Yes. So you actually, so, you know, it's interesting, you know, because we usually say this thing, I, I have to see it to believe it. We're always like that. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, most times, what we believe impacts what we see. You know, if you are looking for, if you are looking for the miracles, you'll find it. You'll find it. You'll have eyes to see it. Mm -hmm. if, look, if you're not looking for the miracles, you're looking for the problems, you're looking for the, the negativity, the things that will bring you down, you'll find that also. You'll see it happen. And, and, you, and the thing is, sometimes we don't, if, if we don't have that faith to know that God is active, you know, uh, then we don't see it. We don't see it at all. I mean, like this whole idea about even, you know, that, that bathroom prayer I was talking about, right? Yeah. You know, it, you know, we only expect miracles when, you know, something goes wrong, but when things are going right, oh my God, that miracle in itself, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a spiritual discipline, and I think this is what's guiding you. I think, uh, Eric, and God bless you in this. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, it, all glory goes to God because if you'd have known me twenty years ago, <laughs> it'd have been a different, it'd have been a different person. So, um, and you know, thankfully, I was saved. You know, um, from alcoholism and. Uh, and struggles and, and, and God brought me through all of that and, and has re remade me. And I have, uh, I have to just thank him, you know, and, and move forward the best I can um, glorifying him. Yeah. Well, you know, again, it's like that, this, the, the, the van, right. I mean, even the struggles that we have early on in our life, and then when we find transformation, those same struggles become meaningful as we share our story with other people. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, yeah, that's it's a beautiful thing. 
Yeah. You never know. Um, you know, it, it, it might not be uh, <clears throat> very, you know, if I can share with somebody that I've struggled with alcoholism and I've seen hopelessness uh, face to face, the darkness and just the despair of, um, of feeling like there's no future, um, no possible way out. If I can share with somebody that Jesus Christ saved my life and helped me through that. And now I've got this beautiful wife and beautiful child, which you saw in the video and this company that uh, God has put in my path um, that there is a way out. You know, I, I think a lot of people see that and think there's no way out. And the only way they can see out is to sometimes to take their own life and, and how horrible that is. And if, but if we can share experiences like mine saying there is a way out and, um, and it's Jesus Christ, if he's the way out and my path won't be the same as the next person's path, but he has a path for you out and, uh, <clears throat> don't give up. Um, cause Jesus hasn't given up on you. That'd be my, yeah. That's a beautiful, that's a I, I like to wear my headphones. I've got guys working out in the shop. <laughs> I love it. Well, Eric, uh, our time is ending, but I, I, I think you are just amazing. And, uh, and I'm hoping, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Sure, I'll just give you a little. Oh, I don't know. I, you still got me, I think, right? Yeah, I still got you. Right. Say hi. <laughs> hi. Oh, wow. Look so that's, that. that's where the noise is coming from. We got guys out there working on stuff, so. Well, it seems like a wonderful factory you got there. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, Erica, we're about to, uh, our time has ended, but I, I really enjoyed our conversation. And uh, and I'm hoping that, I, and I'll check out your website because I'd love to see it. W where are you guys say is You're in Minnesota, aren't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Minnesota. Um, right. we're, north of the, we're north of the Twin Cities, yep. And, and uh, and. And so I'd love to look at uh, look at the uh, the website too, and and show my wife. I, I think uh, you know maybe we'll dream a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for all that you do, and and God bless you. And and uh, I love your story of transformation. I know that it's it's making a difference out in the world. Great, great. I'm and, glad I could and, share it. And and please uh, send our our our. Our, our regards to your wife and and your beautiful son and and may God bless you all. Thank you very much. I will do that. All right. Oh, I just I just love hearing uh, wisdom from people who have, who have found God and and have faced challenges and have come it through the presence and and activity of God. And Eric Loken is one of those men. And uh, and um, we're grateful to God for for him and and Gina and his wife uh, and his and their children a child and we hope that, that God continues to bless them in the world. Uh, our time is now ending, so let's end uh, with a quick prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the many blessings you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for all those challenging moments in our lives that we thought were mistakes, and yet. In the midst of those mistakes, uh, you allowed us, something called us to turn back to you. And you allowed those mistakes to become moments that are experiences of transformation for us. Lord, we know that you trans transform us. You don't throw us away. You take what we have and then you say that we are good and then you transform us to be even more a powerful witness for you. We pray, Lord God, that you will continue to watch over us and continue to give us eyes to see your miraculous work in the world. We thank you, Lord, for people like Eric. We pray that you will continue to bless him in his work, bless him in his family, and we pray that you will help him to, to continue to glorify you by proclaiming the transformation that only you can bring. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, go in peace to love and serve God. The world needs that type of peace and light. Thanks for watching. Did you know that you can join Christ Church from anywhere in the world? If you're feeling connected to what we're doing, email us today at communicate at Christchurchwesterly.org.